Aphrodius the god himself has offered to let us use his account to do a showcase on Fatalis. And he already went through the trouble of maxing him out and kidding him out just the same way that I probably would have done myself. So big shout out to Afro Senbo for helping me out, letting me borrow his account. Fatalis looks awesome. He looks pretty damn good, right? But what I've been hearing and all the thumbnails that I've been seeing on, on YouTube, uh, apparently he's not the best champion out there, especially for a void. Okay. But we're going to see right now how... Oh, wow. Oof. So let's first take a look at his kit. His A1 ignores 15% of the target's defense if this attack is critical, has a 20% chance of granting an extra turn. Attacks one enemy, will ignore strength and stone skin, increase defense and ally protect buffs, also ignores 15% of this target's defense if this attack is critical, decreases the target's attack by 10%, up to 30%. I want to note he's an HP based nuker. Forgive me if I sound nasally, I'm getting over a cold that I got from the kids. His A3 is an AoE that ignores 15% of the target's defense if this attack is critical. You can see a theme here, if it's critical. Decreases the target's defense by 5 up to 30%, and then attacks one enemy, ignores 50% of the target's defense, fills this champion's turn meter by 50. Damage inflicted by this skill cannot be decreased by enemy passive skills or masteries, except by the passive skills of bosses. So for an example, when you're going up against Taurus, who has a passive that mitigates 50% of damage, this move right here will ignore that passive, so we're doing the full amount of damage. Damage inflicted by this skill cannot be increased by either this champion's masteries or ally passive skills except when attacking bosses. There is no increase HP. I don't know what they're talking about there. Uh, maybe I'm wrong. This is a secret skill. What? It's a secret skill and only becomes available when any three of this champion's skills were used in a round? So I can't go into a fight against Taurus and immediately start with this move. I have to use three moves first. In a classic arena fight, the third round, you're pretty much, you know what I mean? You're pretty much already dead, especially if you're going up against Taurus. Those fights don't last long. Actually, I just had a pizza and post edit, I realized that this ability here is true to the actual game. In Monster Hunter, you do need to do about three combos before you can actually use the true charge slash. But there is a way to go get around the three combo parameter. You can do like, uh, anyway. This makes sense if you're trying to stick true to the source material, but in practice within raid, I think that a lot of people who play raid actually don't know about Monster Hunter just by looking at the sheer number of CCs who don't even pronounce the characters' names correctly. And by the way, I'm not hating on anybody who can't pronounce the names. I'm just being a Monster Hunter snob. I can tell that maybe this raid community isn't too heavily into Monster Hunter. I guess they could have gotten away with this, but putting that note in there so you guys, I don't know, have a little bit more context. And then his passive, Fatalis Legend, places a shield on this champion equal to 25% of their max HP for two turns at the end of their turn. This champion cannot receive critical hits while under a shield buff placed by this champion. So he seems, on paper, really good. Increased by 35% in arena battles, he seems like an arena champion. But I haven't personally played around with him, so I don't know why he's rated so badly. But this move right here... After reading this, it, it seems kind of weird. Like, this is the move that you would want to use against somebody like Taurus. He seems like a Taurus counter. But I, I don't know. We'll see. But before we go into the whole testing and everything, I want to go over his stats and his masteries. All right, so here are the pieces of gear that he has him built out in. We have speed, HP, crit rate. Of course, you want to prioritize HP because he does damage based on HP. You want to make sure he has 100% crit rate. And a lot of crit damage, so this is really nice. In a Savage set too, we're getting crit damage with HP percent. We have defense percent with the HP flat. This is okay, makes him a little bit tankier. I think personally, I would have done HP percent, but this is totally fine. Speed with speed on Stone Skin is pretty good. Triple with the crit rate. His ring, HP with more HP. Crit damage, counterattack, that's pretty good. Counterattack with HP and a triple HP. Prioritizing HP, 209 speed is pretty good. 100% crit rate with almost 250 crit damage. I probably would have changed this and put more into HP just because 
Uh, he's already tanky with some of his skills, especially that shield, and HP is already a tanky stat to have. There's nothing wrong with having extra defense. It's great that he has him in a savage set, because we're going to be ignoring 25% of the enemy defense. He already has some ignoring mechanics with his moves here. On top of that, we're getting an extra 8% from having stone skin, a single piece. It helps. Okay, and as always, do not blindly copy masteries, but go ahead and feel free to blindly copy masteries. We're taking the standard nuking route, extra crit rate, extra crit damage, ignoring shields, or not ignoring shields, but increasing damage to targets that have shields on them. Ruthless ambush for extra damage for the first hit that you do, so if we nuke, then we're going to want to do that. Increases the cooldown of a random skill when damage exceeds the target's max HP by 30%. More damage masteries. More damage masteries here, here. We're taking Helm Smasher to ignore an extra 25% on top of all the ignoring mechanics that we already have from the skills and from the Savage set. Then we're taking our standard defense route for some counterattack masteries as well as damage mitigation further. So again, on paper, he seems like a really awesome champion, but I'm led to believe that he probably isn't going to perform too well judging based on what people are telling me in Discord, as well as the thumbnails that I've been seeing on some YouTube videos. But let's go ahead and take him into live arena and we'll see how he performs, if he doesn't get banned. Thank you for 721 subs. And here we're going to just pick an absolutely annoying team here. We have the Cancer Couple. He has Marishka and Taurus, that's crazy. I'm gonna take away Sun Wukong. This guy, probably won't have that good of it you know what i should have brought somebody for decreased defense and weaken this isn't exactly a fair fight we'll take whatever live arena throws at us okay here we are of course hegemon is going to go first and there he goes okay there's only one thing you can do we're gonna do the cleanse and we're gonna start out by placing block damage so brogney's probably gonna do his a3 if he doesn't take forever to make a decision Let's try the A3 first. Okay, so we're seeing 24. I saw 24 there. And I don't want to use Taurus to kill anybody quite yet. I think we're just going to do this. Uh, he's obviously going to do it. Uh, we can we can do that. This is supposed to be a Fatalis showcase. So I don't want Taurus taking all the, the credit here. Although I did pick him. I couldn't resist trying to put both of them in. Place a shield on everybody. Let's do this, and let's see if he can get one more lick in. I will try his A2, and we're going to try it against Brogdy. 49. Okay. And let's go ahead and wipe this out, and go on to our next fight. I'm not sure why they keep handing us lower level players. Usually what I see is that when I, when I see live arena players who are lower level, but they're up here in gold, usually they're high spenders, or they just have been getting lucky, but we'll see. Anyway, um, let's go ahead and place the increase crit damage and crit rate, and let's go ahead and hit Masha Led. And then we can go ahead and uh, let's... I actually have never used Marishka before. So let's do this A2 here. And let's place decrease defense and weaken on everybody. Or just more too, that's fine also. Yeah, he's not going to revive because Lydia's here. Oh, okay. Alright, so let's try to do this one. Ignore Strengthen and Stone Skin. Ignore the Stone Skin. I want to see that in action. We do have the increased crit damage on Fatalis. Let's check it. 51? Didn't even kill. I feel like that should have been an easy clap. Nice, we're removing debuffs. Alright, let's try this A3. Three. Actually, let's do his A1. Let's just do his A1. Oh, that's pretty cool. It's like an, the original move from the game. So that was pretty nice to see. Of course. And we're going to do this. Do that. Do the ally attack. And boom. Only 42. Decreased defense and weaken. Okay, so we unlocked his true charged slash. Let's see what this does, and we're looking... Oh, there it is, yeah, 135. That was pretty, pretty cool, but we had to do three moves to unlock that. Let's go ahead and do another fight. Okay, we got a guy who's at level 100. Let's see how this fight goes. 
We have the Cancer Couple with us, and we have Fatalis. Let's go ahead and increase crit damage. We'll take out Arbiter. I hope. Oh, wow, he didn't even kill Arbiter. Let's go ahead and place the shield, or the, yeah, the shield with the strengthen. And let's do this, and we'll see what we do to Pythion. 43. I can't say I'm too impressed with the numbers. Let's go! And of course, Mariska places the shields. We're gonna cleanse everybody. That's insane. That's an insane ability to have. Like, I wish I had Taurus and Mariska on my account. I have Taurus, but I don't have Mariska. Let's go ahead and just do our A1 on Mithrala. 31. Luckily, Cardiel was there to pick up the slack. And let's go ahead and take care of this Jester. Really annoying champion. A1, ally attack. That's insane. That Tara Shamriska is just a nasty couple. Well, let's go ahead and take him into Classic Arena. I want to do a little bit more testing. I wasn't too impressed with the damage that he was doing in Live Arena. Especially when having Cardiel. Because we're increasing that crit damage by 30%. And Fatalis still wasn't even one-shotting anybody except for with his secret skill that was unlocked. So let's go ahead and just do uh, maybe one or two classic arena fights and see how this goes. Let's do the increase crit rate, crit damage. And we got the fears on everybody. Let's do decrease defense and weaken. Ooh, that's Sun Wukong's putting in work. Let's try to take him out. Oh, I hit UDK instead. Dang. Alright, let's do the A3, and we get, uh, feared. Okay. Comes right back. Now we get to do his A3 again. Or try it. 67, 48. It's not crazy. Those aren't crazy numbers, to be honest with you. Especially for a Void champion. Here, we're gonna do this. We put Fatalis in the lead to get an extra 35% for HP. Increase crit rate, crit damage. So 66 right there. That's pretty cool. Decrease defense and weaken. 65 on the counter attack. That's pretty nice. All right, so we have our buffs up. And let's do this A2, which will ignore the strengthen on more two. 133. Okay, that's pretty cool. And let's do the true charged slash. And we get 63. Try to go up against Necrit. See what we can do. Same drill. Increase crit damage. Doing 25. Let's do the A3 here. 14. This is a beefier team than the ones we were fighting before. Necrit's actually a crazy champion to have. I, I wish I had him. It would make all of my plat pushes so much easier. He counterattacked for 20 with his A1. Alright, let's try his true charged slash against Duchess with the ally protect. We're looking at 18. Oh my gosh. I guess going up against a quote unquote real team, trying to use Fatalis. Uh, let's do this one. We're we're ignoring ally protect buffs and the strengthen. We still <laughs> 21,000. is now going down. See, his A2 was meant to be a counter to somebody like Necrit, who places ally protect and the, what do you, what do you call, the strengthen. Fatalis is not Fatalising. He did 34 to Necrit there. All right, true charge. <laughs> Secret skill, again. 111, what? There just seems to be an inconsistency. I'm not, I'm not exactly sure. 20 against the shield. And, of course, okay, she comes back, so that's cool. And actually, Helios, or Heliore is a really nice champion to have. Alright, we're going to ignore Strengthen and Ally Protect again. 70k, okay. I don't know why it's hitting now, but it wasn't hitting before. 71. Let's bring everybody back. 
Is it just my team comp? Is it just me as a player? 73? I don't know. But let's take him to the dungeons. All right, our standard Dragon 20 run. Let's go ahead and check it out. Fatalis is in the lead for some extra HP to get extra damage. Let's go ahead and place the increased crit damage to Fatalis. Hit for 35 right there. Decrease defense. Weaken. And we'll try his A3 first. Doing 60. I think I, think I saw 70 there, but still not a one-hitter. Boom. And let's go ahead and back out and restart that. It's, let's actually take Taurus out. Okay, we took Taurus out. Let's go ahead and hit it again. 56 that time. Decrease defense and weaken. Let's see. His A2 hit against Tyrell. 122, but still not a single kill. And keep in mind, guys, this is an account with endgame gear. And we're still not one-shotting a lot of these guys. Let's do the A1 on Horden. 81. All right, we're coming up to the second round. Let's go ahead and increase crit damage again. Decrease defense and weaken. And we've actually unlocked True Charged Slash. So let's go ahead and test that out against Tyrell. And only 141. For reference, I've seen Taurus and Trunda clear these waves and i've even seen rotos clear through these waves and uh, that's just you know something to consider he's a void legendary champion a limited time event champion we do see the extra turns proccing from his a1 so that's pretty cool only happened once it's a 20 percent chance pretty decent chance i think this nuker is not nuking and here we go. I'm just going to let that run on auto. Coming to the end here. True charge slash 153. Whopper. And we're going to go ahead and take them into Hydra. I just want to see. We're on Hydra normal. I just want to see what the damage output is going to be for Fatalis going into Hydra with him. All right. So Fatalis goes. He hits for 291 on the headless head. Will I be thoroughly impressed? Let me see. 69, 221. His passive is proccing. I forgot what it does already. His passive places a shield buff and can't receive crits. Got it. All right, so here we are, 107 million damage. A casual 107 million damage. Taurus definitely did twice over, pretty much, the damage that Fatalis Blademaster did. And they're both Void Legendary HP-based champions. Fatalis is not exactly what I thought he was going to be. Even with pretty end game gear even with the extra crit damage from cardiel he's just not doing it for me the general consensus seems to be that for most people fatalis is underwhelming and he's not doing it for them either you know his multipliers are nowhere near what somebody like taurus is who is another hp based champion is or are but the other sides of this entire discussion around fatalis blade master i think that before if i hadn't done my free to play series I, I don't think I would be saying this, but because I am doing my free-to-play series, I think I could provide this perspective. If you are a player who is newer, or you're even mid-game going into late-game, if you're not trying to compete in the higher echelons of Arena, for an example, I think Fatalis Blademaster might actually be good for you. And this is me talking again reasonably. Now, I don't think that he is somebody who is going to disrupt the meta against somebody like Taurus, for an example. But I do think that he is a very tanky champion, and I think he does hit decently hard enough for somebody who wants to be in, like, gold 5 or 4 and below. Not a meta changer, but pretty good for somebody who is a free-to-play player or newer to mid or even late game. And you know, I think a lot of the other CCs who did cover Fatalis, you guys have to remember that they have gear in the endgame. These are guys who have been playing for like five years plus, who have been, they, they spend a lot of money and they get perks from being in the content creator program. They get, you know, rewards and extra energy and, and gems and stuff. These guys have gear that 95% of the player base probably will not have or can relate to. So you guys have to keep that in mind. So don't 
compare yourselves to the CCs and don't always take our words for it. You guys have to remember we're not perfect, we're just behind cameras as well. So take our advice as a, you know, somewhat with a grain of salt. We try to be real, but sometimes we kind of get disassociated. Now, that was me talking as a free-to-play player with a newer account. As an endgame player with a pay-to-win account, this mindset is saying Fatalish is dog sh but you know who is? Nergigante Archer. And check this video out right here.